Following the breakup of Yugoslavia in the 1990s, the Western Balkans embarked on the road to democracy, striving for stability and prosperity. The EPP group has always been a strong supporter of the region's integration into the European Union and today held its third conference on the issue. So what is the future of the Western Balkans with Europe? Albania, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Croatia, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, Kosovo, Montenegro and Serbia are all undertaking economic and political reforms to bring them closer to the EU. In many cases, however, animosities related to recent wars are still an obstacle to regional cooperation. Members from the European Parliament and experts debated the difficulties which the countries in the region still face, such as judicial reforms, minority rights and the fight against corruption and organized crime. We are here to encourage them to express our readiness, no, 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 not only by words, but by concrete suggestions, concrete projects. And I think that is very important that EPP, which was always the force behind the enlargement process, and we want to continue this uh, image, is organizing this conference. We must to have a good uh, integration with the Western Balkans. It's popular for the peace in Europe. It's very, very important, a fast process. We must to be very clear about the future of the problem of visas. It's impossible to have the visas between our populations. The Copenhagen criteria set out at the June 1993 European Council in Denmark define whether a country is eligible to join the EU. The criteria require that a state has the institutions to preserve democratic governance and human rights, has a functioning market economy and accepts the obligations and intent of the EU. Serbia is an official candidate and has already implemented many reforms to meet the standards required. It's going well but it could be better. We expect all EU member states to respect the conclusions of the European Council and to uh, set the date for Serbia for opening accession negotiations before the end of the Irish presidency. That was a commitment of the EU27 so I don't have any reason to doubt that the EU member states will stick to their commitment. Montenegro, Iceland, Turkey and the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia are the next candidate countries for accession. But many people have criticised future enlargement, saying the EU is in danger of becoming a victim of its own success. EPP Group spokesperson on enlargement and neighbourhood policy, Gunnar Hukmark, disagrees. Some people thought that maybe once six was enough, or nine, or twelve. But what we have seen is that the European Union has become better and better. I don't agree with those who say that we have an enlargement fatigue, because in that sense, because of the enlargement, we have a more vitally dynamic Europe than we had otherwise. The problems we have today are not coming from enlargement, they're coming from lack of reforms in very many of the old member states. Geographically, the proximity of the Western Balkans makes the region of particular importance to the EU. Croatia's accession to the EU, due on the 1st of July, has given significant hope to the other countries in the region. The EU has said it is open to everyone who complies with its rules. Let's see which will be the next EU member state. As always, you can find more information about this and the group's other activities on our website at eppgroup.eu. Until next time, thank you for watching.